So I had a call recently from a friend of mine who was asking for prayers for a friend of hers who had died. And I said, sure, no problem at all. And uh, so I included her in my prayers and that was all good until uh, at, uh, during a subsequent conversation, she said she just feels really guilty about this person's death. And I said, well, why, why was that? And she said, well, that she had been in touch with me she, that's what the girl said, that she'd been in touch with me uh, a couple of weeks before she died and I never really made much of an, an effort to, to meet her or to talk to her. And then it kind of clicked. Sorry, how, how, did this, how did this person die? And she said, it's either suicide or an overdose. There are moments in our lives when, when our action is, is, is critical, you know? Now, let's be very clear. It's, it's, not that, it's, not, it's not that lady's fault for not contacting the girl. If a person decides to do that, if, if, if a person tries to commit suicide, attempts to commit suicide or actually commit suicide, everyone is left with the, the question, you know, what could I have done? What should I have done if I'd only known? If, if, if I had called, if I'd called in, if I'd uh, made more of an effort, if, if I'd done something else, something different, maybe I could have saved that person's life. Uh, that's... That's, that's torturous because you'll, you're, you're, kind of, you're stuck with that regret forever. And it's, it's not really well founded because uh, at times uh, if a person has made that decision, it doesn't matter what anyone would have said. And yet at the same time, it's important for us to realize that our actions make a difference. Our actions make a difference. If we decide to pray for someone, that makes a difference. If we decide to show someone love, that makes a difference. If we decide to give someone our time, that makes a difference. Everything we do makes a difference. A couple of weeks ago we were meditating here at Mass that what we do here, it changes the world. You know, like spending time in front of the Lord, receiving the Lord, allowing Him to transform us. The, the, this, this changes the world. Like the, the, the transformation of the world begins with the Eucharist. So what we do here is important. My actions, my inactions. What I choose to do, what I choose not to do. It's all important. Now, that's not to say that everything is my fault if something goes wrong, but my actions are important. And it's, it's a fairly, again, shocking reality, you know, to, to, to realize how important these hands are, you know, whether I make a phone call or send a text message or, or give someone a little manly pat on the back, whatever it may be, that like, I, I, can, I can do good, I can show love, I can build people up with these. Or the opposite. In our gospel today, uh, the story that the, the paralytic being healed by Jesus. I love the story, but I, I guess sometimes I, I, I like looking at other little details that maybe people don't focus in on. I love this guy's friends. The paralyzed guy's friends. What class friends to have. They bring this paralyzed guy to Jesus, right? And there's a crowd. I mean, houses wouldn't have been big then. Uh, so they get to the house and the place is stuffed. And as it says at the beginning, Jesus was teaching one day and among the audience there were Pharisees and doctors of the law who had come from every village in Galilee, from Judea and from and, and Jerusalem. So you've got your, your big wigs and then there would have been the ordinary folk in there as well. I mean, everyone would, would, would have wanted to see this preacher, teacher, healer uh, they would have, for, for advice, for healing, for whatever it may be. So a big crowd gathered. So the, the, the friends of this paralyzed guy arrive at the door and not a chance. And then of course you're awkward like, and you've got a big stretch like you can't just kind of shimmy in uh, easily. You can't. So like, right lads, should we give it a shot? <laughs> like, I mean, now that's something Dominic would have done, absolutely. When he's got a, a task in mind, that's it. It's getting done. So they climb up on the roof and they tear this guy's house apart. Right? They take the roof off his house and lower the guy down. And Jesus, rather than going, what on earth are you doing? He goes, your faith has healed you. Doesn't even notice the, the hole in the roof, like. But I just, I love the guy's friends. Like they're letting him down, and then their friend is healed. That's what they're willing to do for their friend. Do you know risk getting beaten up, possibly arrested for? It's not really breaking an entrance. It's kind of it's just breaking, uh, <laughs> but destruction of pub, private property, I suppose, maybe possibly. Um, but they risk that. Uh, and, and of course, you're doing this thing in front of a whole crowd. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not opening up a roof kind of subtly. You're like you're passing the tiles and you're 
peeling the tiles off, off, off this roof. Sorry, lads, mind the dust. Sorry, sorry, bit of mortar coming down. Sorry about that. And here we go. Like, there's nothing subtle about it, but they're willing to do this for their friend. You know, this is what they're willing to do because this guy needs it. And because of their action, this guy's sin is forgiven. So, even more important than his physical healing, his sin is forgiven and his body is healed. So this is the, the, the action of friends and how critical it is. This is the power that you and I have. To bring people to Jesus or not. To pray for people or not. To, to build people up or not. To use my time for the service of others. We can do all of these things. We can, we can bring the, our paralyzed friends, if you will, to Jesus. You've probably heard the expression before that... Uh, you might be the only gospel that your friends see today. You might be the only gospel that people around you see. Again, for all of you watching at home as well, like if you're working in a school or, you know, those awkward conversations in, in the staff room or working in a business, you know, the, the, these conversations that we have so often on a, on a daily basis practically, where the Lord can come in, where in some way I can witness to my faith. And they're presented to us on a golden platter. Will you stand by me? Or will you deny me in the face of men? And it's, it's hard. People expect it from me. I've got a collar. Uh, they can, but even, even in front of priests, like, priests still have to stand up for what's right, even in front of other priests, you know? So, all of us in some way, like, we, we take a risk. We take a risk of getting arrested for taking a fellow's roof off. We take a risk of not being accepted for standing for, uh, for the truth, for the teaching of the church, for the teaching of Jesus Christ, for the gospel. It's a risk. It's a risk. But when we do so, and we do so out of love, the consequences are forgiveness of sin, healing, life, and of course the witness then to all of these people. That we, gave, we just gave, his friends just gave Jesus an opportunity to prove who he, who he was. Because of this you know, startling scene, Jesus now has an opportunity to say, in front of a crowd, your sins are forgiven. Pick up your stretcher and go home. So through our witnessing, we give Jesus the opportunity to show his power in people's lives. Again, it's just like, <laughs> the power we have is incredible. It's not the kind of power the world thinks is powerful is rubbish. The kind of power that we get through the faith, it's, uh, it's, it's for the building up of an eternal kingdom. So, we ask the good Lord today to renew our, our faith in him. Renew this zeal that we should have, motivated by love for him, for the building up of his kingdom. The zeal that we should have for for the salvation of souls, that people be saved, that people get to heaven, that people can have the opportunity to spend all eternity with him in this place where, as our reading told us, everlasting joy will be on their faces. Joy and gladness will go with them, and sorrow and lament will be ended. Amen.